All right. To finish off section 1.4, we've got to talk about piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are basically just functions that are spliced together, like uh, the function found on problem 44 of this section on page 107. Here we're splicing together the function 2x and x, and we're putting the condition that if x is less than 0, then we're looking at this part of the splice. We're looking at the 2x part. And if x is greater than or equal to 0, then we're looking at x as our function. So on 44, we're asked to, for part A, we're asked to evaluate g at various x values. So g of negative 1. This is to say when x is negative 1, what's the value that g returns for this input? Well, if x is negative 1, then which of these two conditions is satisfied? Well, it has to be the case that x is less than 0, because x is negative. So since x is less than 0, we use the function associated with that condition. It's the function that's on the same line, if you will, on the same row as the condition. So we'll be using the function 2x to evaluate g of minus 1. So we plug minus 1 in for this, in for 2x. So instead of x, we're plugging in minus 1. And our answer is 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. So g of minus 1 is minus 2. Next, they ask us to evaluate g of 0. Well, this is saying that when x is 0, what's the value of g at this particular x value? Well which of the two conditions is satisfied? Is 0 less than 0? No. 0 is greater than or equal to 0. So we use the second, con the second condition is true, so we use its corresponding function. So we plug 0 in for x. And we just get g of 0 is 0. And finally, g of 1, this is saying that x is equal to 1. Well, the conditions that satisfied 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So, with 1 being greater than or equal to 0, this, the second condition is satisfied, which means we use its corresponding function, x. So instead of x, we replace x with 1. And that's our answer g of minus 1 is minus 2, because we used the top function to evaluate it, the top part of this function to evaluate it. g of 0 is 0, and g of 1 is 1. And for these last two, we used the bottom part of this piecewise defined function. And that's the answer for part A. Now, for part B, they ask us to sketch a graph of this function. And we already have three points. We know that when x is negative 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. So let's use those points on our graph. So x of minus 1 is minus 2. When x is 0, y is 0. And when x is 1, y is 1. It's going to turn out that the graph looks like this. Oops, that's not right. 
There we go. You see, for x to be less than zero, it means it's that the x value is on the left half of the x-axis. So this part of the graph, the part that's on the left-hand side, looks like y equals 2x, because that's what the condition associated with x less than 0 is. So for the left half of the graph, the part of the graph that has negative x's, the graph looks like y equals 2x. Now for the right half of the graph, the half where the x values are greater than or equal to 0, the graph looks like y equals x. And that's what we have here. This half looks like y equals x. And the right half is the half where x is less than or equal to 0. So if you will, what's happening here is we're kind of taking two graphs and cutting strips out of these graphs and pasting them together. One part, one graph we're looking at is y equals x. And we're only interested in the right half of this graph. We're only interested in the part of the graph where x's are positive or zero. The rest of this we're going to throw away. So this is the right half of our graph, this line here, as you can see from here. The left half of our graph is going to come from the, the graph of y equals 2x. And y equals 2x looks a bit like this. And this graph, we want the part where x is less than 0, where x is negative. So we're going to take this half of the graph, but we're not going to take, we don't want to include the x value uh, where x is equal to 0. So we're going to include the left half of this graph, this part, up to this open circle, and we're going to throw away this right half. And then to get the graph of our function, of our piecewise function, we're just going to take the left half of y equals 2x and the right half of y equals x and paste them together to get this piecewise graph. That's what I mean by saying we're kind of splicing two graphs together. We're taking parts of graphs and pasting them together to make one whole graph.